We have a very special guest now in Brussels from Serbia, Emir Kusturica, movie maker and artist. Thank you very much for joining Euronews. Hello. What was the last time when you visited Brussels and do you see any changes? It was very funny. I must say that uh, I planned my coming because of the Bozar program, Balkan culture. And somebody told me uh, three days ago, are you still planning to go there? Are you afraid? And 10, 15 years ago, if somebody would have told me that uh, somebody will be asking me, are you afraid of going to Brussels? I would say, you're joking with me. So the, the world is changing and even all what happens here in last months is something that I, uh, n that I was not predicting, but I felt would have come as, uh, not, but in, not in this form, would have come as an answer of, uh, of the mixing societies and the world dramatically changing in the past 10 years, 15 years. You've seen the Balkan Wars. Do you see any similarities now with the today's terrorism? We, we are living in fears in, in some European capitals now because somebody wants to kill us. I'm, I'm, I'm positive that the, the whole situation that is now with the migrant crisis is somehow created. And uh, we have uh, very strong statements by George Soros, who is uh, one of the major generators of what is called open society, which means in many countries creating revolutions and making huge impact on the society, especially in Eastern Europe, who was encouraging uh, refugees to come to Europe. I very much stay on the side of refugees, but I'm very much against the political uh, conception that creates uh, people coming from Turkey to Europe and disturbing uh, what used to be uh, migration that was normal, not migration in which people coming in stampedos and, and uh, f facing uh, uh, liberty of Europe with the huge fences. I must say that from the, the, the destruction of Yugoslavia, I never expected Europe to be creating huge fences and strings to stop the people coming here. But I think it's, uh, if you look back in the last 10, 15 years, or 20, even 20 years, the, the collapse of Soviet Union had produced, uh, I would say, lack of democracy in the Western world. When Soviet Union existed, all the democracies around the Western uh, world were obliged to confirm in their parliaments that there is a democracy and they are not just uh, conveying what the people from the shadow or today what is called the corporative world is telling to the politicians what to do. So I think 20, 25 years ago, we were started a, a new era of, of uh, I would say, uh, erasing democracy from the system of communication in between inside the countries and in between the countries. Look at Brussels uh, commissioners. It's the same like in uh, Soviet appara apparatus. You have commissioners, you have the people who are not voted, you have people who are appointed, which means that the whole conception is, I would say, getting into the problem. Especially if we know that uh, if somebody from Turkey is coming to Europe, that's very normal because we all, I was coming to Europe almost like a refugee in the 80s when the war broke up in Yugoslavia. But when you have uh, such a huge number, it's like what Mr. Soros said, that he wants to create uh, Europe without identity, uh, uh, pouring as many, as many uh, people from Middle East as possible. But how can you prove that Mr. Soros is, is uh, doing this conspiracy? I mean, uh, I didn't if, say you, that if it's you conspiracy. say so, then you have to prove it also, no? I'm not, I'm not, I don't need to prove it. You just go to a site, uh, Infowar, and look at Mr. Soros' speeches in, uh, around the world. If you go to uh, Serbia, revolution in Serbia was made throughout his institutions. 
if you go to any place, uh, you, if you go to Georgia, you will see that he was an uh, active, active player in this. The, he doesn't, he says this in the panels in the United States. It's not a conspiracy. It's, uh, it's something that uh, it's very visible. What makes me uh, believe that normal uh, approach for everyone who wants to come to Western Europe to share the goods of the most developed societies is normal. But when you have uh, uh, trains of people who are desperate and who do not uh, uh, choose when and w which way they go, very often I'm confused why Saudi Arabia, with a huge amount of money, wouldn't build the cities for them. And why would they finish always in Germany in the large scale? not in the normal immigration process. I'm immigrant, I'm, I'm European by immigrating, uh, uh, by, by leaving the, the war zone. But uh, we were not coming in, uh, in, uh, in, in millions. We were coming step by step by a very, as a ve very individual act of becoming a, a refugee. More than one million people passed through the so-called Balkan route during one year. Did this change the soul of the Balkan, for example, your country? I don't think so, because they don't want to stay, even some people do, uh, they don't want to stay in, they all want to go to Germany. So somebody would ask, why don't we make everywhere Germany so people could, they don't need to run away. But still, there are fences, and the fences are being back. The fences are just uh, destroying the conception of liberty. Could you imagine uh, thousands of years we were developing the, 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 the free market, the free thoughts, egality, uh, uh, fraternity, and apparently Western Europe is uh, alongside with the, the fences. This is really destruction of the basic, and I think the whole thing is uh, just changed massively after the collapse of Soviet Union, and as, as I said before, from the period from which democracies are not any more real democracies. They are much more corporative-driven, politically correct uh, societies which are accepting and being silent on certain things they have to speak, speak up openly. Serbia is on the road to join the European Union. What do you think? Will it be a success, for e su success uh, story for your country? I think Serbia is anyway a European country with all the symptoms that we, uh, we proved in the past. The, the problem with the European Union that I have is you have to prove that you are European by administrative procedure, not uh, with the label that used to be your culture, all what you've given to the world by all means within the, the Serbian culture, which is very compatible to you, to any European culture. Uh, so the question is, are we speaking about a military alliance, which is more than Europe, or we are speaking about what uh, uh, could Serbia benefit if gets in? And I think if Serbia gets in, it could benefit some, some advantages or many advantages uh, in the social life, but on the other hand, uh, uh, does it understand getting into NATO, which means that uh, uh, our GDP will be a much more in difficult position than before, because when you're in NATO, you have to you pay your alliance and you have to pay uh, protection or you have to pay the, the weapons that you, you, you have to buy from. So this is very vague. If I was a president of Serbia, I wouldn't uh, drive Serbia at this moment to Europe. I would stay much more, I would say, uh, 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 neither East, neither West oriented to be uh, in, in good ways. Today, unfortunately, it's very difficult. That's why I'm not a politician, because probably I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to defend my, my, uh, my intellectual uh, position. But probably the European Union has uh, almost the same function as the Yugoslavia had, keeping uh, nations, keeping different people together without war. I'm just telling you, 
we have a period of time in Europe in which I am told in Belgrade, are you afraid to go to Brussels? I said, no, I'm not afraid because I'm not afraid of very little things. I'm, I'm quite brave man to go anywhere in the world. But it's paradoxical that central place in Europe is bombed, uh, airports destroyed, and uh, the enemy is uh, from the heart of the brotherhood. Because most of the jihadists and most of the people who are participating in these uh, bombings are uh, financed by the funds, secret funds that exist in between uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and uh, even they say that most of the weapons they got from the United States by mistake or by whatever mean, uh, it's, it's true. So France is attacked by jihadists, by Daesh. They kill 180 people. And at the same time, France is selling weapons and selling uh, mirages to Saudi Arabia, $11 billion. And those people who operate around the world, including France, are supported by those who they sell the weapons. So this vicious cycle of war, profit, and capital functions perfectly. The problem is when it gets uh, enormously uh, dangerous, which is the, the, the case of today, uh, I don't see a social regulator who will uh, announce this and who will give us the information who is doing what. And in this, uh, I would say, complot, we uh, are just victims of, uh, and I blame, I think the most difficult part of our social life is the change in between the states and the corporative power. I think all what is done around the world, what is bad for people is uh, produced by a uh, military industrial complex that produces weapons and employs people to, to kill each other. What would be the solution then? Going backwards to the socialism or what? I think the, the only way, but the only way, is to go to socialism. Because this way of... Uh, 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 w w th this way, which fits in three, four countries in Europe, is not necessarily uh, uh, possible for the rest of the world. The same story with democracy. If you want to apply democracy to Libya, you are criminal. Because how can you apply democracy to a country in which one man sees the other throughout the dust each, each, each hour? And, and, and it's like enormously huge. It's like a, a, a going to Sahara to, uh, to employ uh, people who, 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 who express democracy. But I lived uh, during the socialism and I remember... That's not that, that socialism, that I think. So let's make the difference, because that socialism... That's Bolshevism. You live in the Bolsheviks, in between Bolsheviks. I'm speaking socialism in which uh, I have even examples of countries like Uruguay, uh, like Mujica's Uruguay, in which the, the president of republic is not corrupted, the President of the Republic has no uh, personal belongings, who works 24 hours for his country. And this kind of socialism would make people think of something, because people don't think about the time they waste subconsciously. That's socialism. Socialism is when you start identifying yourself with the time and the space in which you are human, not the victim of certain conception. You know, I had a, f uh, 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 what is the, 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 the present time situation of the man? I know very prominent uh, engineer in my city where I live now, who was extremely known, uh, accepted, wealthy, and he got uh, disease, Alzheimer's disease, and he started taking pills. In five months, by taking these pills, his brain started producing, in a certain centers, re re receptors, 
the started getting him to to pay for the prostitutes to 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 spend money and to get into all of this they found that the pills that he was taking are making him like becoming a zombie from some contemporary movies and i think variety of different possibilities that we have how to destroy ourselves today we choose always the shortest way to go and that's why i believe socialism as i would say system that slows the progress quickness of progress is something that uh, uh, works with a strong inertia and that's what uh, corporative capitalism is about and if we don't correct it we are going to have big destruction in the end. Emir Kushturica, thank you very much. Welcome.